So most relational databases have three ways to store string, char, where char, and text. Let's start with char. So char allows us to store strings up to n characters, not bytes because we know one character can take more than one byte. But if we try to store a string with number of characters more than n, it throws an error. And if we try to store a string with less than n characters, then it pads it up with spaces to its right. For example, let's say I have a table in which I have a column called name whose type is char5. And if we try to insert a string called ohm whose length is 2, the way it would be stored as om space space space. So it pads it up, tries to match the width of the column with spaces. If I try to insert om space 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 space, the length of the string is more than n but the excess characters are spaces. So what database does, it truncates the spaces and still maintains the width and persists it in the database. If we try to insert let's say string with length more than 5 or more than n, it throws an error. Let's say if I try to insert omkar of length 6, it throws an error. The second type is where char. It is same as char but without padding. Right? So if we try to insert ohm, it would be stored as ohm. If we try to insert omkar, it would throw an error because my limit was 5, I was trying to insert row 6, the, the number of characters being 6. The maximum limit of n depends on the database that you are using. For Postgres it is 10 MB, for MySQL it is 65 KB, again configurable, so I would highly recommend go through the database documentation. But if you compare these two closely, you can very clearly see that there is no genuine reason to use char over where char. Because you neither get performance benefit, you neither get storage efficiency. Why? Because even though you are storing just two characters, you are still eating up the space for five characters unnecessarily. So there is no storage efficiency to by using char and no performance efficiency as well. Right? So that's why for most real world use cases, you gravitate towards using where char more than char. Right? Now let's spice things up a bit and talk about text column. Now text column allows us to store strings of any length. Now any length again, subjected to database, configurable by database, highly recommended to check the documentation. The max limit by Postgres is 1 GB and uh, like basically 1024 into 1024 into 1024 characters and obviously if something is being given, your database has to trade it off with something else. So what it limits is if you are using, if you are having a column of type text, you cannot create a foreign key check on that. Right? Because imagine having a foreign key checks on this large blob of data, not possible, right? So your database disallows creating foreign key checks on text columns. Now let's go slightly deeper and understand how these long text are stored. Now this long text, it's a very common misconception that hey, long text data will always be stored in a separate disk location, but that does not happen. So even if your column type is text and if you store smaller string, it would be stored in line with other columns of the row, even though you have specified the column type as text. But if you are trying to store a larger text, in that case it would be stored on separate page of the disk, in background table or separate section, whatever your database wants to call it. This is done to keep the row length shorter because the database always tries to minimize the length of the row. Right? Now this way, what happens is if you are storing a large text and you're trying to get it every time your lookups are slightly slower because now it would have to read multiple disk pages first disk page where this row belongs and second disk page where it where the large column value is referenced to so you get some you lose some you try to keep the row smaller by storing the reference now you would have to do multiple disk page reads right now still not the end of the word but because you need to store large values for example blog data description bio you have to do it because keeping the row length shorter is of higher priority. Right? Now, for example, let's say I have a table called people in which I have five columns, ID, which is would be an integer, name, a varchar, email, a varchar. You can clearly see where I would want to match or index a column I'm giving using varchar, password varchar, bio, it could be large, bio description, blog, whatever. So it using text over there. Right? Now this is, one key thing is whatever we discuss this about text holds true for varchar also because you can have a varchar column of length 10 MB that we saw. Obviously that is not stored in line. So not all varchar are stored in line and not all text 
are stored as separate pages as pointers. Right? So these two are very common misconceptions that exist. So when you go through your database documentation, you can find these details. Right? So no crude generalizations, always go through your database documentation. So to summarize, two key misconceptions is whatever we discussed about text also holds true for varchar, number one, which means that if a varchar is long enough, which is prolonging the length of your row, then the varchar is also stored on a separate disk page and a pointer is stored over here. And on text, if your text is small enough, it can be stored in line by your database and not always be referenced as pointer. Right? Okay. <clears throat> so, my, as per MySQL, now the interesting thing, as per the MySQL and Postgres documentation, there are no performance difference between the three types. So, care, where care and text. There are no performance difference. It's just that care might take some additional storage because of blank padding that it did. Then there you might require some CPU cycles for storing the length along with the string and processing it by using where care and text. But it's negligible, almost negligible. So no substantial performance difference in the latest version of MySQL and Postgres. So hence, in most cases, you see people gravitating from where care to text people gravitating toward text for greater flexibility because now you are not limiting to certain n in case of varchar. So how should you how should you decide which one are you picking varchar or text. So one simple one sim oversimplified convention is for strings use varchar for text use text. Let me give an example. Let's say you are storing username, email, first name, last name. Typically, you would be uh, gravitating towards using varchar and it's perfectly fine. Right? And for text, for larger blob of body, like bio, body, blog body, description and all, you go for text. But there has to be a reason, because if text gives you everything, there has to be a reason for you to choose varchar. So to choose varchar over text, three things that you can go for. First, when you need a foreign key check, for example, authentication token can be stored as a varchar. Right? You would need to have a, let's say for authentication token, you want to do lookups, right? For that, you would want to read it. You might want to have a foreign key check on email due to some reason. That's why you would want to do it. Or maybe username. That's why you want to do it. Right? So when you need a foreign key check on column, you are gravitating towards varchar. Right? That's why. Second, when you need a quick index lookup on exactness, for example, select star from people where email is equal to this. So you need a quick index lookup. And this is where varchar excels slightly over text. Right? And when you need out of the box constraint of max length, for example, let's say at the database level itself, you want to prevent people from inserting very large amount of data. For example, bio has maximum limit of let's say 120 characters. You can enforce this constraint on the database layer itself by setting it to varchar. So that no matter, even accidentally, no one would be able to insert it. So in that case, if you want those constraints out of the box, you can choose to go for varchar. But if you're not, you can also always apply this check on the business logic side. But if you still want to enforce it on the database side, varchar is the way to go. Right? This allows you to not store or rather this allows you from storing the large values in the row itself. But again, these are just a normal, uh, like these things that we discussed about care, where care and text, they are very database specific. So I would highly recommend you to read the database documentation because things might change today. This is the, basically today, this is how the database works. Tomorrow, they might decide to change something. So I would highly recommend whenever you're watching this video, do go through the database documentation just a bit because now you have a broader idea, but do go through the database documentation to know the specifics of it. Right? And more importantly, know the tunables, like after what length does your database decide to store it in a separate page versus inlining it over here, right? There are multiple tunable parameters. There's something called as toast. Read about it, right? So yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.